Okay, now let's talk about running video conferencing uh, using your Z series. And this is a question we get quite a bit. It's like, you know, how do I run Teams? How do I run Zoom? And it's it's understandable that that question gets asked, but really the answer to that question is the way you always do. You know, there that's one of the 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 beauty of having a panel like this, particularly when you're using the OPS as I have right here, the the built-in PC. Or this is also true if you have a laptop connected to the panel, it would actually work the same way, where you run video conferencing the way that you always do. Nothing about that changes in terms of the way that you operate it. But you want to make sure that when you're in your video conferencing program, that the program sees the proper devices to use during the meeting, that it sees the camera. If you have it, I actually have the camera attached here uh, to my Z-Series. Uh, that it sees the microphone array, that it sees the panel speakers, if that's the audio device that you want to use for, for output. So we just want to go into settings and make sure that those things are true. So I'm going to go ahead and use Zoom as the example. So I have Zoom open here. You see I'm logged in, so I've got the main Zoom screen here. And again, this would also be true of Teams or WebEx or whatever. The, the layout on the menus will be different, but the idea is the same, that you just want to go into settings and check your devices to make sure that the program sees what it needs to see. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to head to Zoom settings, and there's the menu. And so if I want to verify that the camera's working, just head to video, and it's going to fire it up, and there it is. We're seeing a, we're seeing a look at my webinar room, which is kind of funny, but I verified that that looks pretty good, okay? And it even shows me the proper camera in the box there, so we're in good shape on that. And if I go to audio, then here I've got the speaker and I've got the microphone, okay? And again, we just want to make sure that it sees the proper devices. And we can actually test them. In the case of Zoom, we can test them because we have buttons here. And most programs will do that. Most programs will have a, a device test that you can do. So the microphone, in this case, it, it could be called a couple of things, but generally you'll see capture input terminal, which I know sounds weird, but that's generally what you'll see there. But if we want to test it out, we can see, I mean, I've got input. We can see it rolling uh, right here, but I can still test it by hitting the button. So I'm going to test it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, there we go. So that's good. Same thing with the speaker. Well, I've already tested that the speaker works because you, you heard that come out of there. But there, it should say new line in the box there. If it says new line, you're in good shape. Yeah. Okay. And it really is that simple. We just want to verify that the program sees the devices. Once we've verified that, then we can start or, or join an existing meeting and away we go. And then the real benefit here of having access to a panel like this is the fact that now you can leverage all of the capabilities of the touchscreen when you're in that meeting to work with content in that meeting. So nothing changes about the way that you run a video conferencing program, because again, you're just running it on a computer, whether that be uh, the OPS or whether that be a, a, a laptop or some other uh, PC or, or Mac or whatever that you plug into the panel. You operate the same way, but you just want to verify that your program sees the panel devices, and then you can run your meeting and do exactly what you always do in those meetings.